some people think that some YouTubers, and maybe they do, only film stuff for the camera, and it's not actually what they do. Um, we don't do that shit. What you see is what I'm doing. So if I succeed, you see me succeed, but just equally, if I fail at something or have issues, you're gonna see me fail, have those issues, work the fuck through them and carry on. Raw as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Today's raw deadlift day. What I mean is we're going back to ground zero. I'm gonna lie, I haven't been deadlifting at all, really. In inconsistently anyway. I think I've done it like three times in what, three months? I don't know. Because my uh because like I said, if you see the previous videos, we're working on those imbalances and fixing them, and I found out that my pelvic tilt was affecting the setup for the deadlift, even though I couldn't feel it when I was watching videos, I could see it, so I was overarching on the lower back. Um, which means it wasn't neutral, which means it wasn't... There's a joke there about bones. There's definitely a joke there about bones. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna be a bigger man and not do it. Just got a brew, I'm still fasted at the moment and um, today is gonna be raw deadlift day. And I don't mean raw as in no straps, I mean raw as in we're gonna go back to the basics. Because what I found was watching back on footage of deadlifts, which is always, always wise to video yourself doing things. And also knowing that I had this pelvic tilt, because again, we're fixing the imbalances. The whole purpose of what we're doing now is rebuilding everything from the ground up to make it as strong and explosive as possible. And I found that I was, that pelvic tilt, I had anterior pelvic tilt, posterior or anterior pelvic tilt? Pelvis tilting this way, so I had anterior pelvic tilt. If my hips were like that, it's tilting forward, so the forward tilt. Even though I felt like I was neutral with my spine, my lower back was actually slightly arched. So on my setup, rather than being neutral, this lower back was arching. So then obviously when I'm driving through with the hips and coming through, what it's not doing is engaging the lower back because it's already arched. So the hips are coming through and all that weight was going through on the upper part of the back, through onto the hamstrings and less onto the lower back, which we want. We actually want the lower back to be worked during deadlifts. It's a huge part of it. So, the weight that you saw me lift, which I'll show you now with some really high-end footage from my phone. You can see here the lift looks decent, it moves pretty well, and you know, I could have just kept driving through with the ego of you know weights were going up, lifts were going up, speed was going up, but I have to accept the fact that the lift was incorrect. It wasn't done technically the way it should be done. And we need to fix that because if we ignore errors and don't fix them, we're gonna hit a point where all the compensatory muscles and movement and mechanisms that we've implemented to make those lifts work, they then stop working, stop allowing us to progress because the muscles that we're now missing aren't working like they should be, so they're not growing alongside the movements. Does that make sense? So when we find an error, it's not a bad thing. It means we found something we can fix and when we fix it, we're gonna grow, we're gonna get better and we're gonna get stronger. So today we're gonna go back in, we're gonna do deadlifts and we're gonna see how much in comparison I can actually lift when I do it properly compared to that that you just saw. So that's gonna be interesting. I don't care, it might be shit, it might be all right, I really don't know. I've tried to keep myself as fresh as possible for this, but so I've sort of woken up and for some reason my lower back is aching. Maybe it's the extra rounds of boxing, maybe it's the extra ab work that I'm doing with a lot of hanging work and things like that. So we're gonna warm in and see. We're also gonna go through some warm ups to make sure that you are getting those joints and everything nice and fluid or ready for your workouts. Then we're gonna add it in finish off with a little bit of bag work and a little bit of strategies that I use on the bag that you guys can utilize to start getting into it. I'm seeing more and more people starting to enjoy getting into boxing, messaging me on Instagram, messaging me on Twitter, YouTube, saying that they're trying boxing because of what we're doing with this series, which is really fucking cool. So, brew, break, we'll go through the pre-workout, bit of pre-carb loading, I'll show you some good carbs that you can take before going to the gym, and then we'll see you at the gym. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about pre-workout carbohydrates. Now what you want before going to the gym is something low fiber and relatively fast acting. Cereals are freaking perfect for this. Now I've got Rice Krispies in here with some full fat milk and some raspberries. I only put 150 grams of the full fat milk in. I've got 60 grams of raspberries in there and then 50 
grams of the Rice Krispies themselves, which works out at around about 40 grams of carbohydrates, which is kind of great. Uh, but also in my bag, what I'm taking with me is gonna be some caramel rice cakes, simple ones from any supermarket is fine. I will have those kind of mid-workout. So what you want is simple, fast-acting carbs around your workouts. Now, I'm a high-fat diet. We've discussed this before. If you haven't seen my diet video, make sure to hit that one up. It is in the description. Link will be there for you, as well as watch the previous episodes of this Undisputed series to find out a full day of eating and how we go about it, as well as eating out and alcohol. If you haven't seen him, go watch him. So kit wise, we're heading into the gym to do some bag work and deadlifts. Now, one thing I've learned, if you're gonna do bag work and do it properly, you get sweaty as hell. So you're gonna need to take a change of clothes. Don't do what I do and sweat through everything and then walk out of the gym, get freezing cold and get sick. Ideally, something like this, seamless, breathable, moisture wicking. It's still gonna get soaked through, but at least it's gonna keep you comfortable while you're doing it. It's not going to irritate you because if you wear something like heavy cotton and you sweat through it, it's gonna start restricting your movement. It's gonna hold that sweat against your skin. And that's what can cause like rashes and crap like that. But for the deadlifts, I'm gonna be rocking just a normal stringer underneath and then over the top, just layering up a little bit, just like a, a cut off over the top. So I'll switch out from this into the dry fit. Footwear, now these aren't, traditionally boxing boots, they're not, it's not what they designed for, but they're kind of set up like a boxing boot. They were in sale, on sale on the uh, Adidas for like, I don't know, 65 quid? Go get them, they're wicked, because I'm able to use these to do the boxing with, but then because they are basically a flat sole, um, a little bit like a chuck, I can definitely deadlift in these. What you don't want to be doing bag work in is running shoes, and what you definitely don't want to be doing in running shoes is deadlifts. Do you hear me? Don't deadlift in running shoes. You ain't running. This isn't nothing to do with the gym kit, but I have to show you my epic Christmas Day pants that I haven't shown anyone yet. Da 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 ta -ta! Woohoo! Get those, those, with a bit of brogies. Well, I was thinking... Maybe a bit, bit of these? Yes, definitely them. <laughs> Can you tell? I'm a fan of Christmas. Imagine these all day, all day, all day, with this grin. Just wearing them for deadlifts. <laughs> Cereal done, eaten. Obviously we've had the kit talk, now about the caffeine talk. So this is basically a espresso shot, a espresso, come on English legs, an, an <laughs> espresso shot, with 20 grams of, yeah, Dr. Zach's coconut oil. Now you can obviously get a pure MCT oil, that would be actually a little bit better than this. 20 grams in here is 20 grams of fat. It's a super easy way of getting a high volume of fat in, in a really low, simple intake dosage form. God, my English is really good this morning. <laughs> I think I need the caffeine. So basically, little amount, large impact. I'm gonna be able to utilize this because it does have MCTs in it. MCTs are medium chain triglycerides. We have discussed this before. They don't go through the same digestive processes. They're basically available to be used as an energy source almost immediately by the body. So MCTs around your workout for your fat sources are gonna make you feel less sick and they're gonna be more utilizable. Alongside these, what I'll tend to do is have a relevant pre-workout. I'm having caffeine here, so now ideally what I would have is I'd have the EHB PSI, which is the non-stim version of it, but then I've also got bag work to do. So it's finding that balance of, I don't want the pump for the bag work, but I do want the pump for the workouts. So what I tend to do is take those with me in my bag to the gym, and I'll hit that PSI after I've done the bag work. I want blood flow for the weights workout. I want that blood to be forced into the muscle and make it work. But what I don't want is I don't want that for the bag work because it's gonna make me stiff, slow, and immobile. My other top tip. Squirty cream. On top, that is literally about three or four grams. You get a lot of volume here for very little impact. Plus, that's gonna sit on top of your coffee and hide that little covering of coconut oil if the visual things bother you. And then from there you just sip away. So morning routines is a very important thing. People always talk about creatine. So creatine, you don't need to load it. I'm gonna say this every time we put it in the video because too many people still get conned by it. Five grams a day, that's all you need. I'm using a micronized version. That means it's super fine powder. That means it's gonna blend in with whatever you wanna chuck it into. It's flavorless and if you're sadistic straight to the dome kind of dude like i am because i'm not because i'm cool or hard because i'm super lazy and don't want to mix stuff <laughs> in a glass this is why my micronized is my favorite because you can just done right let's actually go to the gym now <laughs> just go do a pee and get a treat con artists 
Come on then. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Fist bump. Yeah. <laughs> we will eventually get to the gym, but look, we've got a man down. Man down. Come on. On your feet, soldier. Where's your scarf? Oh, crap. That's Lex's cardio done for the day. <laughs> Making my life hard work here, mate. Trying to relive a childhood dream. <laughs> so we're only about an hour and a half behind schedule. In fact, I'm at the gym. I've done my stretches, I've done my warm ups, and I'm focusing at the moment really on uh, releasing kind of glutes, hip flexors, shoulder joints, and uh, releasing the back as well. So, I've done my stretches and mobility and things like that. So, simple like lunge stretches for the hip flexors, uh, glute releases. I've been working out the back. I'm a big advocate of the monkey hangs as well, which is basically just where you hang and completely release everything. And that really helps release all the back and the shoulder joint and the scapula, just allowing your own body weight to release all that. And uh, one thing I did in the past was not warm up. It was a huge thing of me just coming in and being fired up, ready to go and just jumping straight in. I've learned recently that it is a huge, huge factor to make sure you're warmed up, the mobility is taken care of before you start lifting. Not only will you stay healthier for longer, but your lifts are gonna feel tighter and smoother and stricter. So talking about the things of deadlifts, belts, I do have a lever belt here and these are, you know, these are an industrial strength style of belt. These are the, the bad boys that will last you for like five years. But they also have some of these kind of softer, simpler belts. Now I might use this one through the earlier sets, give me something to brace against but this is by no means really suitable for deadlifting. The lever belt, the big boy, the bad boy, that's when you're using that against the heavy weights, squats and deads. So as you can see, we're in a new gym, we've seen it before, and this one has proper, full-on powerlifting platforms, and these are legit. I've never had this before. Everything I've been deadlifting from has been just like a concrete floor at best. Um, so this is gonna be a real learning curve for me in terms of having something consistent to be able to deadlift from so that I'm able to really understand uh, what weights I can lift, how I'm lifting them, and keeping the consistency of the type of bars, the type of weights, and the platform that I'm on. No more of that bar rolling away from my feet or starting off at weird angles and causing kicks and kinks. So there's no excuses now for me to not dig in and get these done. So what we're looking at today is to see what real weight I can lift. We're gonna try and work through to see what my actual max is today at this time. If it's shit, it's shit, I don't care, I'm gonna show you. But what I'm looking to do here is I'm looking to control my pelvic tilt. I'm looking to make sure that my back is truly neutral and that my lower back isn't arched prior to lifting. And I'm gonna really focus on pulling my lower abs in and keeping my rib cage down. All through the stretches and everything, I'm always looking to keep that rib cage down. If you do that, that's gonna negate most of the problems that we see with like pelvic tilts or kind of offset of the body mechanics and that rear chain. So this is it, it's gonna be raw, it's gonna be, it's gonna suck. It's gonna, it's gonna feel so fucking alien because I haven't done this for a while, but let's see where we're at. We're gonna start with some lightweight, higher rep work, just to get the body warmed up. Then what we'll do is we'll, so we'll do about 10 reps on those, then we're gonna move into putting a bit of weight on, five reps for two sets, then we'll go to threes, twos, and then singles and see where we get to. I'm not gonna lie, not making excuses. My lower back is a bit tweaky, I have no idea why. But what I want to do is also go through the setup of the deadlift for you now, just to show you what I'm thinking of before we even lift. And even though I'm not great at deadlifting, I know that these are the mechanics and these are the foundational basics we should all be focusing on. Number of things you need to be thinking about before you even pick up the bar. And these are big important things that have changed the way I feel about a deadlift and the way it feels when I've been doing it. What you wanna do, you need to pay attention to these points, feet, Hips, core, shoulders, breathing. So these are the things we need to be thinking about before we even start a deadlift. Think of that, we want our feet just hip width apart. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach down and grab the bar in a natural position. So don't try and drag your hips too low. So when you reach down and sit, this is my natural position here. Where the bar touches my shins, this is my natural starting point. If I sink any lower, all that's gonna happen is my hips are gonna fire early and I'm gonna do like a ratcheted movement up where you'll see like this double movement where the hips pop and then the back follows. From here, what I want to do is three things. One, I want to roll my elbows in and that's going to help me then contract my back and then I'm going to pull the slack out of the bar. So I'm rolling, contracting the back, I'm pulling the slack out of the bar. My issue with the pelvic tilt would have had me with a slight arch in my lower back like this when I need to be like this, neutral and squeezed and tight. I was like this. Can you see the difference? It is very, very subtle 
but huge because the reason that back is arching is because the body has developed a bad mechanic of taking the lower back out of action. I'm not gonna look up and forward, I'm gonna keep my head neutral. I'm gonna take a big breath into my belly and I'm gonna hold it like someone's gonna gut punch me. Then I'm gonna drive up through my heels and straight away I'm gonna drive my hips through. Hands roll back, contracted, big breath. Drive, hips and heels. Bang, at the top. What I'm not doing is then levering over. What you can do is squeeze, and what, that's what you've seen people do is they're squeezing the scapula, but what they're not doing is arching that lower back. Until you get good at this, until you build the natural mechanics and get your system used to lifting like this, stop and restart at the bottom of everything you do. In hip width, hands roll back, breathe, drive. That is what we need to be looking at every single time before we take the bar off the floor. Make sure you're pulling the slack out of the bar. So if you're here and you've not got the slack out of the bar, you're gonna drive and as your body moves up, the bar's gonna slightly move up and the weights aren't gonna move. So by pulling the slack out of the bar, the moment, moment we move up, boom, the bar comes with us. Does that make sense? Woo. Right, let's see where the fuck I am at now <laughs> with these. <sighs> Good luck. This is either gonna be <laughs> pleasantly surprising we're embarrassing. <laughs> oh. So, what we're going to be doing in between each of these is stretching out that lower back, kind of keeping it as uh, supple as possible, not letting it tighten up. Hopefully, it'll ease off as we move in. And I think I've just figured out the reason why it's aching. Because I'm retraining the way my right foot walks. So when I'd walk, I'd be like that. So now I've got a stabilizer in there that forces my foot outwards. I think what that's doing is making that whole right side work in a, a plane that it's not used to working in. And that's probably what's causing it to burn out a little bit. So it's always good to know the reasons why. We've got these aches and pains. <laughs> some people think that some YouTubers, and maybe they do, only film stuff for the camera. And it's not actually what they do. Um, we don't do that shit. What you see is what I'm doing. So if I succeed, you see me succeed, but just equally, if I fail at something or have issues, you're gonna see me fail, have those issues, work the fuck through them and carry on. Raw as fuck. <laughs> Handy in. Okay, so now we're warmed up. We talked about free workouts before, so, so I'm looking for energy, focus, and stims. It's because we took about an hour and a half to get here, prattling around like usual, <laughs> usual fucking lexiness. I'm gonna want a bit of caffeine again to really fire me through these, so I wanna get my max today. So, RP Max, this is stims, focus, blood flow, no pump though. This is no, no pump agents in it. So this is perfect for what we want today. It's gonna not make me over pump, but it's gonna give me that energy and help those muscle fibers fire a little bit quicker, so. Just in here, no. <laughs> Maybe it's not in here at all. Oh no, there it is. <laughs> Into sound effect. So yeah. many things going through my head. The first time that you got with a girl. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> this one time. Thank you. Little to the left. Little to the right. There it is. <laughs> Do. Rub that shit. This is getting very sexual <laughs> very quickly, isn't it? Squirty noises, left to right. Okay, so this is where we start building up now. So I'm just gonna be doing simple like twos and threes, building up until I fe feel like I'm gonna start needing straps. And then once I need straps, that's when we do single reps and just slowly build up and see where we get to. On this now, we've done three reps on that. That felt pretty okay. That's an over-over grip. What you're gonna see me do is switch to an over-under grip. Reason being, I have baby grip strength. You know, just, you know when you shake the mate's hands and some of them are like, oh, dad grip. That's what I call it. I don't have dad grip. I have about 14 year old 
just found the internet grip. <laughs> <laughs> With white all over his hands. <laughs> Mum! <laughs> I told you to knock! You always gotta knock! So now what we're gonna do is go 10, I'll see how that feels, and then if we need to increment up in fives or whatever after that, that's what we'll do. I'm interested. I wonder if we'll make it. Will he make it? Tune in next two minutes. <laughs> I really felt on that one there, when I set down, that arch went in and I really had to focus to pull that back neutral on that. If you mm. might have seen it, hopefully you see it. 100%, in my opinion, you should use straps, but only when your grip becomes the limiting factor in your lifts. Because what I don't want to do is try and lift it, the bar shift down, down to fingers, you know, where you end up gripping it like this and, and trying to edge it up, and then the bar ends up off, off an even keel. Because then all you're going to do, for the sake of not using a strap and trying to rip it up when you know you really shouldn't, you're probably going to tweak something because your whole body's off balance in this really kind of dynamic movement that requires a lot of technical application. So if we don't have symmetry left to right at any point, then you need to stop and adjust or stop and address the issue that's stopping that symmetry happening. Make sense? Let's see what happens. If this doesn't feel like it's going to move or if it moves a little bit awkwardly, uh, no, do you know what? Fuck it. We're going to get this one up, we're going to pull this motherfucker up, then we're going to strap up and belt up. No. Oh, fuck no. That was poor setup. Okay. The shoulder's back. Come on. No, I ain't going. Fuck. That's where we are at. Well, that's where that's at. Fuck me. That's so strange. Hit 190, no problem, no straps, no nothing. And it moved. I wonder if I'm psyching myself out. So, I mean, in your head that makes no sense, does it? Pull 190, clean, no straps, no music, no nothing. You put it up 10 kilos, and the body, what, you can't lift it? I mean, it could be two things. It could be uh, the additional weight is pulling me out of my form, so I'm not transferring the power properly. Or it could just be the fact that I have not deadlifted for so long, that now the central nervous system is shot, and I've just blown my load. <laughs> 190 without straps, it's a decent starting point to work from. Um, I would say on a day where I'm fresh, this would go up. It feels like this would go up on a day where I'm fresh. So what we'll take that as being, whether this goes up or not today, we'll take 200 as being my marking point for like kind of a max range. And then what we'll intend to do from this point on is a bit more of a programmed style towards the deadlift. So as it turns to the bodybuilding side and the boxing side, I'm obviously trying to merge those to creating like a functional kind of bodybuilding strict training. So we're keeping the aesthetics of the muscle whilst building that functionality and cardio. Um, with the deadlifts, it is sensible to just do standard deadlift programming where you work at um, kind of percentages of your max at different integrated parts of your week. So if you're doing like twice a week, maybe one week you'd work at 80%, then you drop down to minus 65, 70% for higher reps later on. So you don't ever want to be testing, you don't want to be balls out all the time on deadlifts because you'll just, you'll, you'll beat the shit out of your nervous system, you'll beat the shit out of your body, your chance of injury risk goes up. So everything about this is going to be sensible. This is why I'm showing you my successes and failures. I don't care if I could only lift 100 kilograms on deadlift. If I was lifting that 100 kilograms correctly, I'd rather do that than lift 150, 200 badly. That makes sense? And that's the, that's the mentality you need to have in the gym. It doesn't matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter that there's a smaller guy who could lift more than me. Fucking good on him. I can go ask that motherfucker some questions about why the shit isn't moving for me. You know, this is what it's about. You don't need to worry about people thinking um, less of you because you can't do something. Everybody has to start somewhere with everything, whether it's um, weights, whether it's some form of training, whether it's some new job, whether it's some new kind of habit you're trying to break or a new habit, a good habit you're trying to build. Everyone has to start somewhere. Nobody's perfect when they start something. 
don't be afraid of other people looking at you. If other people have time to look at you and judge you, they aren't doing enough shit for themselves anyway. So you don't need to worry about people like that. Let's fucking pull this motherfucker. Come on, Jay. Going to <laughs> oh well. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> right, so that's it. That's fucking it. It's just it. that's what it is for today. Uh, I knew when I came in here that I was a little bit like not 100% doing this. I'm still happy. 190, no wraps, no straps, no music, no nothing. I'm pulling that. For me, that's decent because I got the baby boy grip. Um, maybe, maybe that was why I went very heavy with the, the natural grip and uh, that I would maybe have got that. If I hadn't, I don't care. So what I'm going to do, use this as my starting point, whether I'm tired or whether I'm fresh, it doesn't matter. This is my starting point. And I intend over the next months, weeks, months, and year to improve on this deadlift. And alongside with you guys, I'll take you along. I'll show you the program I'm going to be doing. I will uh, take you through any errors and things that I find, things that help me improve. And uh, we'll go from there. If you have any help from me, hit me up in the comment section below. Some of you guys are fucking amazing at deadlifting. It's something I've never done, it's something I've never stuck with, and I intend to do it. This whole series is about that. Doing things that we should be doing, but really haven't been, and we've been avoiding them because maybe we're a little bit scared that we weren't good at them. So, let's all do it together. Hit me up in the comments what might help me, and uh, I'll see you under the bar again very soon. But for now, let's go do some boxing. So immediately from after doing those deadlifts, what I can feel, my lower back on both sides is pumped out crazily, which sounds bad, but it's, to me it's really, really good because when I used to come off deadlifts, what I used to find was I'd feel it in my upper back, hamstrings and quads, not lower back. Today it's all lower back, which explains why I can not pull that 200 then, because when I pulled it in the past, I wasn't pulling it with the right muscles. What I was pulling it with was compensatory muscles. So this is, to me, even though that might seem like a failure to many you, to me that's a fucking huge success because it means that the mechanics I was using to pull that lift Correct, I'm making the parts work that should be working and to me that's fucking brilliant. But now we're moving on, boxing, so I'm switching out, getting that dry wick on so that we're comfortable and functional. And I did not have to wash this top in the sink and then dry it with the hand dryer because I covered not. it in mud from fixing the snowman. <laughs> so now we're gonna be doing seven rounds on the bag. That's seven three minute rounds, 60 seconds rest, and that's timered. We're using an app on our phone, and it's gonna be called Round Timer. That's right, a really ingenious, hard to find name. Round Timer, just search it, that's the one I use. You're always, always asking, it's super simple to find. Round one, what we're gonna be focusing on is setting up our distance, and really just working that jab, really rolling the body through. So it's gonna be kind of lighter work, throwing those single shots and maybe doubling them up, moving around and just getting that distance and timing. Second round, what we're gonna be moving into from there, we're going to be looking to end with more of a power shot on some of those combinations. So now we've got a distance and timing, we're gonna throw a couple of light shots and just end the combination with a bit more boom, a bit more zap on those shots, moving around the bag, just starting to get that head movement going. Third round, we're gonna be planting our feet using the heavy bag and just throwing some more power combinations, but they're gonna be throwing less combinations, less punches in this round, but more power. Fourth round, we're gonna be bringing in some elbows, knees, and kicks, because the body's nice and warmed up then, so we're able to kind of get that body moving through some more ranges of motion, utilizing that kind of Muay Thai. Then rounds five, six, and seven, that's full movement, full body, boxing kind of fight mode, coming in, light shots into power shots, moving around like you would in a fight, conserving energy, coming in, blah, 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 and then moving back out. Always thinking about head movement, not admiring shots too much, uh, keeping that guard, thinking about what they might throw and then reacting against it. It doesn't have to be perfect. All you have to do is focus on throwing and constantly moving and keeping range and distance. You don't have to be perfect. The motion of going through this exercise, this regiment, this routine of boxing and throwing and moving and kicking, it's fantastic for your cardio. It's fantastic for building muscle. You can actually develop better looking muscle from doing this boxing work, from doing the Muay Thai work. So don't be afraid. There's people in here every day, little old ladies, little old women, little old men on these bags just punching out. They're not doing perfect punches, but they're in here fucking working. 
you have no excuses. So we talked about the carbs before coming to the gym, nice and simple, and then we said intra-workout carbs. I'd like to take in around about 20 or 30 grams during training, but what's really ideal is when you've done something like the deadlift, something that's really kind of tax the system. Now that I'm going into more of a high output state, I want to get something in there that's going to digest quickly, help replenish those sugar stores, glucose stores, get that glycogen going through the system again. Perfect rice cakes, low fiber, simple sugars, straight in and able to work. I even eat them when they're stale as shit and I don't care. <laughs> like, they're fine. So I'll have two of these now, and then I'll probably have two again after the boxing, just to help replenish myself. Everything about your training is directly tied to your food if you feel like you've got low energy if you're feeling tired if you're feeling like you're not performing it's usually due to the fact that you're not supplying the fuel your body needs to recover or to give you the output that you want so address that make sure that you're taking in carbohydrates around your training now i'm high fat lower carb diet here so i'm on 100, 150 grams of carb a day but around about 90 to 100 grams of those carbohydrates will circle around my training. So make sure that that is your point of call. When you're feeling a certain way, make sure that your food is on track. Don't just assume your food is right. Think of different things you can try. Try them, see if you like them, see if it works. If it doesn't, there's a hundred other things you can be trying. There's no perfect, one singular correct way to do things, but there's many ways to do things wrong and many ways to do things right. This is one of the ways to do it right. <laughs> So, oh, we've uh, into the seventh round now. This is a new round I've added just literally yesterday. So, at this point, my gas tank's empty. It hurts to breathe. It hurts to breathe. But this is where we break boundaries. Ah, this is where everybody else quits. Dig, dig. Jab, jab. And again, jab, jab. And again, add that hook. Come on, work the body. Work the body. Push, push. Again, push, push. Again, push, push. Push, push. Push, push. Push. Push, push. Push, push. Push, push. Push, push. Push, push. Go. Oh. On your feet. Oh. That's that. Woo. I think you can tell by the state of me. No bullshit in here. <laughs> <laughs> that was harder. I was doing deadlifts 100%. But I got through it. Talked to myself all the time. Move, move, move. Trying to keep that range on those distance uh, punches. Trying not to get sucked in too much and throwing short punches when I get tired. It's gonna happen, but the more you can recognize it and fight it, make yourself work harder, the fitter and fitter you're gonna get. So start small, three, four rounds, three minutes, and just add a round every so often. Once you're feeling like you're getting through that final round and you still have 
the mental energy to push through another one, maybe not the physical, but the mental, then add it in there. Because you don't get further unless you set the goals further, set your markers further away. Oh, I think that's it for this session, man. Oh, so we found my, we found my new real deadlift max. <laughs> and there's some bag work ideas for you. Oh, we'll catch you in the next video. Remember, these Undisputed episodes are coming up every Sunday and Wednesday. We've also got more coming with Owen Roddy, Connor's coach. We'll also be training back up in Liverpool with Darren Till. And we'll be working with a new boxing coach as well as heading back out to LA to see Shane from Fight Tips. It's all coming together slowly but surely. And this is the thing. It is a journey, not a race. I'm starting on the bags and getting my cardio ready before I step in and do any sparring because it's pointless sparring when you are just a sack of meat because all you're going to do is get tuned up. In the next few weeks after Christmas is where we'll be stepping our game up into the boxing gym, back into the boxing ring and seeing where we stand in terms of timing, knowledge, movement. I'm going to be rusty. I'm going to be rusty like a nun's chastity belt. <laughs> but we will get there. Thank you all for joining. Make sure if you made it this far, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and then drop down menu. Make sure you get all notifications. Oh, from me, from the Welshman behind the lens, I'll catch you in the next one. Boom, baby. Lately, I've been doing shit different. Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen. Had to make a move, had to make a little distance. A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision. Fuck that, tell them bounce.